What really happened in real life that if you saw it in a movie you would say that's totally unrealistic. Not me, but my mom. She got home from school as a kid, saw a big white dog on her porch, and went to ask my grandma if she could pet it. It wasn't a dog, it was an arctic wolf that escaped from the zoo. Well this could have gone differently. Imagine your mother entering the house. Her grandmother lies in the bed and is all weird, having a croaky voice, huge ears and eyes and then she eats her. That would have been an unpleasant meeting with a wolf. My birth mother tried to kidnap me and a few years later my birth father snuck his way into my life and befriended me, without me knowing his real identity for years. I saw mugger walk up to a 70 something year old lady and try to steal her bag. He grabbed it she tugged back and smacked him in the face with it and told him to go frick himself and just continued walking like nothing happened. Once I saw an emo skinny dude destroying a skinhead brute in a bar fight, he was nicknamed super emo after that. When I was younger, an emu escaped a traveling petting zoo. The emu ran havoc around our town, pecking at and breaking countless car mirrors, only to find itself into a McDonald's basement. Till McDonald's the basements. I used to be a logger out west and had an incident that was right out of a movie. We had just taken our lunch break and were working on a fairly steep hill. We had found a silkworm and a few of us were holding it during the break. Has to do with the story. Another crew above us started working a few minutes before us and the few of us below were just getting our saws back up and about to move out. We suddenly hear a loud rock shout from above. An Indiana Jones size boulder had been knocked loose and shot out from about 30 feet above us. The three of us below saw it and dove out of the way. It proceeded to crash into our packs and shatter into two giant boulders and it kept on rolling. We started yelling rock in case anyone was down there and the boulders eventually hit trees and stopped near a level area. We went back to our packs and my buddies is completely destroyed. He had a pot in his bag that he used for lunches and it was smashed. We started to clean up and the silkworm emerges from the smashed pot like nothing happened. It always reminded me of a Disney film where the cartoons get hit with something that would surely kill it in real life but it just bounces back up. What is most amusing to me about this story is the imagery of several manly lumberjacks tenderly taking turns holding a silkworm one of them found. Carlos Hathcock sniped a guy through the scope during the Vietnam War. Bullet went straight through the lenses of the scope and exploded the other guy's head. He was a fantastic sniper, but he was always plain about admitting this was a lucky shot. He also pointed out that for this to have been possible, it meant the other sniper had Hathcock directly in his sights, so if he'd been a second or two slower. Me trying to snipe in every video game. Emperor Calmodus. In the movie Gladiator he is portrayed as a cunning, paranoid, scheming butthole. In reality he was batshit insane. For example, he kept renaming everything after himself. He renamed Rome into Carmidus, Roman people into Commodians etc. He renamed, money, the senate, and other stuff. Some say his namesake lives to this day. Welp, gonna go use the commode. In the Jersey Shore shark attacks of 1916, which were a basis for Jaws, the attack stopped after a hunting buddy of Teddy Roosevelt beat the shark to death with a piece of broken oar. Peter Benchley, and subsequently Hollywood, decided it was too unbelievable for audiences. Considering he was a hunting buddy of Teddy Roosevelt, that's fairly plausible. This makes me question what ridiculous standards he had for friends. There's a happy ending. When I started bleeding while I was pregnant, it happened when I was asleep and was painless. So when I woke up I had been bleeding for who knows how long. My waist to my knees and all of the bedding was absolutely soaked in bright red blood. I honestly would have laughed if I had seen that in a movie scene because the amount of blood in the shocking red color would have been unbelievable to me. I, of course, thought I had miscarried, but I hadn't. That kid is 5 years old now and it turned out that my cervix was just very sensitive and had started bleeding. Same thing happened to me when I was 6 months pregnant. Never seen that amount of blood or been that scared I roll. Thank god everything was okay and my 2 year old son is sleeping here next to me. A chimp running around downtown, generally causing some cute havoc with the police officers. The cops had left the doors of a police car open in the hopes that they'd be able to close him in, but of course he managed to be the one closing the cops in the back. 
He was a mini celebrity for a while. Had his little diaper and would make random appearances in the local newspaper as a mascot of sorts. People sorta of forgot about his mascot status when he went and ripped the lady's face off. Though. That escalated quickly. My great grandpa knew this guy in Germany. They were building this hotel or something. All I know is that it had multiple stories. Well the guy was plastered because they were drinking beers on the job. He was on the top floor and he ended up falling on the steps. He rolled down all of the stairs on every floor, as well as falling through the parts that were still being built. Everyone was positive he was dead, but he stood up and basically thought he was invincible. After the incident, they all decided to go to a pub to celebrate. While they were there the guy got super cocky and decided to show everyone in the pub how he survived his fall. He had everyone stack all the tables on top of each other like stairs and decided to roll down it. He died instantly. I wonder if he had internal injuries and succumbed to them at the perfect moment. Vanilla Ice owned a kangaroo, which escaped in Port St. Lucie, FL. I was too young to remember it, but my dad was watching the news and it was hilarious. Regular people were trying to catch it with fishing nets, out of the backs of pickups, in the hopes for a reward. When I was a teenager I fell out of a small boat with an outboard motor, which then went right over me. I was wearing thin surf shoes, the blade of the propeller cut through the shoe, right beside my big toe, but did not cut my toe at all. On the other hand the blade did hit my knee and cut it open, so it's a bit less miraculous sounding than it might have been. I had something in a similar area, I hit my foot, accidentally, with a sledgehammer while wearing open toe sandals. The foam rubber sole extended past the level of my toes at the front took the full impact and I didn't shatter my toes. I was at the beach with my wife and kids. My teenage daughter got hit by a good size wave and lost her glasses in the surf. She was super upset as she's pretty much blind without them, has no spare and were not going home for days. I ran out into the surf to try and find them knowing it's a total long shot. I search for maybe a minute, already about to give up because of how unlikely I am to find them when I spot them. Dive into the waist high water and grab them. Saving the day. I once wore my glasses swimming at night, forgot they were on my face and went under. Obviously they fell off, I was pee with myself. I was blind as a bat, I was a teenager so I wasn't looking forward to telling my parents. One of my friends walks out into the water to jump in one last time and steps on them. No damage. During the development period of Ridley Scott's Gladiator, there was a scene written for the character of Maximus where once he'd become a famous gladiator he'd do a product endorsements for a brand of olive oil. The reason for this was historical accuracy. Gladiators actually did paid endorsements for products. However because the concept seemed so anachronistic the scene was dropped. Ironically to improve the sense of historical accuracy. Reminds me Schindler's list where they toned down how evil Amon Goth was because in real life he was cartoonishly evil which audiences might not believe. The whole assassination of Franz Ferdinand fiasco. First attempt failed. Went for a sandwich. Target accidentally drives past you in an alley. World goes to crap. I was stalled on a roller coaster at Six Flags while three members of One Direction and their security detail boarded. Thing is, the cars are the back to back layout, this was the Green Lantern roller coaster, so my sister and I were sitting directly across from Harry Styles. Thing is, I wasn't really a fan, I had a vague idea of who he was and my sister confirmed it. We had a light conversation where my sister asked how he deals with it, referring to all the teenage girls screaming near the ride's exit, where he replied though, I thought they were screaming for the ride. I had a friend who decided to try Tinder, Sunday night, starts chatting to her first match, they have a date Monday night, they're married now. I have a very similar story, after my ex left me my bff told me to try a dating app and would not drop it. I signed up basically to shut her up. First guy I met on that app is my husband now. President Donald Trump meeting with Kim Kardashian on prison reform, then flying with Dennis Rodman to open negotiations with North Korea. It sounds like a news anchor in the background story of a Leslie Nielsen movie. A plane full of passengers being shot out of the sky, killing them all, and then, absolutely nothing or no consequences. World War 1, 
you're up a flame. Gone on for years. Everyone who matters who might get involved has already chosen sides. Stalemate. Only power that matters who hasn't chosen sides is the USA. Won't join Germany yet al. But might join on UK side. USA is trying to broker a peace. Allows Germany to use US telegraph cables to communicate with ambassador in US handling peace negotiations. German Foreign Minister Arthur Zimmerman wants to make sure the US won't enter war. His plan is to transmit a coded message to his US ambassador to relay to Mexican ambassador to give to Mexican government offering money and support if Mexico attacks the US. The US trusts the UK not to be tapping their cables. Germany trusts the UK to be tapping the US cables. Zimmerman telegram. Sometimes Zimmerman note. Is encrypted with super unbreakable German code. Unfortunately UK code breakers are super. Super good. And of course they were tapping US cables. This kind of thing is exactly why. Problem is. They can't admit they were tapping US cables. They want the USP at Germany. Not both sides. They arrange a break in the Mexican telegraph office as a plausible source of the cable. And tell the US about it. The US goes to Germany. What the frick? Is this real? Or is it British bulls? And Zimmerman says. Publicly and on the record it's real the US enters the war a few weeks later and Germany inevitably loses the war. Because a politician was unwilling to lie in his country's best interest. Because a politician was unwilling to lie in his country's best interest. No politician has made that mistake ever since. John is down. You really expect me to believe 900 people committed suicide at the same time? If I recall correctly, they did kill the guys that didn't want to die. You had people with shot wounds and traces of fights. Some security footage in a Middle Eastern country showed a car full of explosives getting blown up by another bomb, soaring hundreds of feet into the air, and then exploding again when the onboard bomb went off. That's so cartoonish. I almost want to see the footage, but the bombs probably still hurt a bunch of people, so I won't ask. I deal with enough negative stuff these days. The last Argentinian government stole so much money, that it wouldn't be credible in a movie. Even one lower tier politician was caught throwing a bag with 10 million dollars cash over a fence. The former president's hotels are always full but only buy 12 croissants for all their guests breakfasts. Her prosecutor on making nuclear deal with Iran casually committed suicide the day before going into court to hand in the case. He shot himself in the back of the head, on the left side, with his right hand. Even if he could be a contortionist, he was left handed. The former vice president literally tried to expropriate for himself the money printing company machine. When the government switched they found dozens of barrels full of effort in at the customs. They gave poor expectant mothers cardboard baby beds, and said they costed a couple thousand dollars each. This one is fricked up, the real price would have been under $30. The Minister of Defense literally lost a missile. This and much, much more but that is just what comes to mind. Geez, when I leave a job, at most I make off with a pen or a ruler. That former vice president tried to make off with the money printing machine. I think I'm doing things wrong. Not a movie trope, but from video games. I got scromboid poisoning a while back. Heart rate spiked, I got overheated and turned red, and both ends of my GI tract went into full reverse. What I remember most, though, was the pulsing red frame around my field of vision. It reminded me of video games where the edge of the screen pulses red when your character is very low on health or about to die. Apparently that's real. The most unbelievable part of this is that there's a thing called scromboid poisoning. Grigory Rasputin's death. He was laced with cyanide in his cake and wine but only felt a burning sensation in his stomach. He was then shot at once, then tried to attack the murderer. After that, he was shot four times and then his body was wrapped in linen to be thrown in a frozen river. I think he died from drowning. I think he was the last vampire and is still alive today. There is a phenomenon known as the Tiffany problem when something is actually historically accurate but goes against the widely held belief. 
It is so called because Tiffany is thought by most to be quite a modern name when it actually dates back to the 12th century. Using the name Tiffany in a film set hundreds of years ago feels anachronistic to most audiences. There is a fairly well known trivia fact that Ridley Scott wanted Maximus to promote olive oil as it was common for gladiators to do such endorsements, but this is another example of the Tiffany problem. Audiences wouldn't accept it as accurate. Not necessarily unrealistic, but it sounds like something that'd only happen in a movie. I tried to get a 6 year old to ask what's up, dog by asking her if she wanted some up dog. She looked straight up at me and said you're bad at this. That famous Danish inventor, Rocket Madsen. He was preparing his own private space program and he had built a working submarine. He invited a Swedish journalist, Kim Wall, to do an article on him last summer. He chopped her up and police started finding body parts around Copenhagen. Just sounded so absurd. If it was an episode of say, Criminal Minds, it would be too far-fetched. He got life in prison some months ago. Audi Murphy in a burning tank manning a .50 cal and mowing down Nazis. He specifically requested they not show this incident in his movie autobiography because he didn't think people would believe it happened. Went skinny dipping in a war zone. Then we started to see dead fish floating around and quickly got out. The next day we saw two locals in a boat using a wire net and a car battery to stun the fish so they could catch them. We were a bit relived to say the least. When I was driving too fast on a snowy NH highway in winter, my Mazda MX-3's balding front wheels lost grip and my car went up the snowpack jersey barrier, did a full midair 360 and landed stably in the lane I had been in. And honestly there wasn't a jarring bouncy experience when the car hit the road. Felt like a well executed skateboarding move. I coasted to the shoulder, took a deep breath or two, calmed the dog down, and went on my way home. It was too crazy to believe. How damaged was the car? My cousin's brother-in-law was the target of a by any mean necessary SWAT team hostage rescue. I don't really remember the details and I'm having trouble finding the article. But the gist was. He was under the influence of whatever drugs and alcohol and had become dangerously psychotic. His girlfriend at the time fled the apartment. Her apartment I think. With their eldest child. But was unable to grab their two year old. He basically held his own daughter hostage, threatening to kill her and himself. He was armed. Eventually the police made the call that they would recover the child by any means, and luckily were able to take both of them alive. The scariest part is that he had lived with my cousin and their kids about a month prior to that incident. My cousin never liked it, cuz, you know, drugs and alcohol, and her husband's good will eventually run out with his brother too. When I was 5 or 6, I was watching TV one night just after my parents went to sleep. I heard a commotion on the front porch and walked to the door to peek through the blinds. And there is a giant grizzly bear staring at me growling. BTW this is Florida. I walk upstairs to my parents room and tell them I saw a bear. They tell me to go back to sleep. I tell them no, there is a giant bear downstairs. As soon as they get frustrated with me. The whole room fills up with red and white lights with PPL on the intercom telling residents to remain indoors. Turns out someone forgot to lock a bear cage when the circus was traveling. After numerous attempts to trank it only to have it knock the darts out, it ran off through my neighbor's yard where her son was taking a drunken pee on the side of the house. He said he looked over and saw our bear look at him while running by, being chased by a clutter of no less than 20 cops and various circus performers with guns and flashlights. That last image is amazing. I wish someone would paint it. The one guy watching this cavalcade of cops and circus performers go by. Bear in the vanguard. I can see it in my head. Unfortunately I cannot paint for crap. You know how bad stuff happens in films as a consequence of misunderstandings that IRL your reaction would be to get all the parties in a room, or on the phone, and calmly talk it out, no one flies off the handle and remains so obtuse and selectively deaf that they won't hear your reasonable explanation, right? Well the deepest crap I was ever in during middle school happened because two other dudes were fighting and ended up smashing a shelf and a computer monitor. There were some beakers sliding off one end of the shelf and I reached out suddenly and grabbed them. But some of them broke right as my teacher turned the corner into the room. So now I'm inside the blast radius of this fight. And the teacher goes absolutely ape. 
chews us out for 5 minutes and escorted us to the principal's office. I'm in tears trying to explain it, but I can't even stem the tide of being called irresponsible. My parents were called, sent home for the rest of the day. I had to write an apology to the teacher and class. And you know those degenerates who were actually fighting never wrote anything. They just took an extra day's suspension. So I'm the one person who apologized. To this day, I am certain my teacher, my principal, and my parents are convinced I was in the wrong. It's like some kind of glitch in my personal life simulator. One time on the school bus, I lent my phone to a friend. He tossed it back to me. When I raised my hand to catch it, it ricocheted off one of my knuckles and flew out the window, where I then saw it bouncing on the highway till a semi ran it over. Always thought that'd be a good scene in a comedy. Reminds me of that time me and my brother went to take the boat out for fishing. He just got a new GoPro the day before and while we left the docks he took it out of his bag and dropped it right into the ocean. We both just stared at the spot it fell into contemplating if it would magically float up or something. Happened to a patient during one of my clinical rotations. Patient was driving a motorcycle on the highway without a helmet, was hit by a vehicle, somehow landed on top of a semi, fell off said semi just to fall 30 feet off of a bridge, survived with a shattered leg, a few bruises, and zero head trauma, lucky PT. I work at a Pratigas hospital a very important doctor got caught selling patients images for research without their permission, was lying to poor freaking patients just to get a surgery to get money from the insurance, I work at a cancer hospital, he would tell terminal patients instead of talking of end of care would make patients and family feel hopeful with this let's hope procedure of course the cancer is spread everywhere so the surgery is of no point was stealing patient images and reports to give to this imaging company he had stocks and invested in. We do a procedure that only a few doctors in the world do. He wants that imaging place to do it and was stealing info to help himself. Of course the hospital being a mafia like all hospitals, did the investigation hush hush. No patient was informed that their images may have been distributed without their permission, or told those poor families that they were given hope and surgeries just for the doctor to make money. Now the investigation is complete and he left for a seminar two months ago outside of the US and hasn't been seen since. Whoa, that is so fricked up. Those poor people and their families. I was walking home one day after a really bad day at work. I had my headphones in and I was cranking tech 9 to try and pump me up. I hate taking crappy days at work home with me. I try very hard to leave my crappy work attitude at work. It was working. Starting to feel invincible after 3-4 songs. But I was still mad. I noticed 4 guys walking towards my direction on the sidewalk. Carrying a 18 case of beer bottles. They were taking up the whole sidewalk. Walking arm in arm almost. I was feeling frisky so I decided these guys could move out of my way. I guess they felt the same about me because I ended up shoulder checking two guys as I walked in between them. I kept walking but something told me to pull a headphone out in case they started some crap. I hear, throw a bottle at that guy or something along those lines. I turn around, walking backwards at that point facing them. Dude grabs a bottle from his case and baseball pitches it at me. I catch it in one hand, twist off the top, bun shoots out from the carbonation and I basically pour it into my mouth and all over my face, give them the tipping of the bottle to him douch a bag turn around and walk home. I couldn't have a crappy attitude after that, I felt incredible. I was at a football game and I saw this huge dog that looked kinda weird but I was like whatever and pet it and it didn't occur to me until a few minutes later that it was a wolf from the woods nearby. It was really sweet though. Yellow muggle Harry Potter. I'm very late to the party but here's my personal story. When I was very young, maybe 8 or 9, I had a friend over. We just went outside in the front yard to play around. We both spot something odd in my hedge. The hedge made a U, where the top of the U is where the yard meets my front door. It surrounds the whole front yard, except for one part that is clear for the path from my door to the driveway. This odd thing was tucked under my hedge at the end of my driveway, on the outside of my hedge. We are in the driveway together debating whether it's a few bags of trash or a person. I am confident it's bags of trash but my friend is sure it's a person. So I tell him, I'll go kick it and show you it's just garbage. 
My parents then come out and haul us back inside. Apparently it was a person. In fact, it was a marksman that was trained on a house down the road. Apparently some lady had stolen a truck, hid inside that house, and claimed she had a gun. I was seconds away from giving this police marksman a boot to the side. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.